No, I don't like it. All right. Well, my name is Jordan. Uh, thanks for taking the time um, so late in the evening to talk earthquakes real quick with us. It's been a, a kind of a fun day. A lot of pretty good size uh, quakes on the Blanco fault zone out there. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, the biggest thing that we've had to do today is field phone calls about the Blanco fault zone and why it's different from the Cascadia subduction zone oh, you know, yeah. physically and why it's not as um, not as big of an alarm bell. Um, so why don't you kind of lay that out from a better <laughs> perspective than me who doesn't know anything about earthquake zones? Okay, so first of all, a lot of times we will have earthquakes off of the Oregon coast. Uh, and almost 90% of the time, it's on the Blanco Fault. So this is this, this is a, a type of earthquake fault uh, that is, is everything is moving like this. It's what we call a strike slip fault or a transform fault. Now off of the coast, we have got uh, 200 miles off the coast, we have a chain of volcanoes. Uh, and that is the magma coming out creates a plate that is moving towards North America. It's being subducted underneath North America called the Juan de Fuca plate. Uh, and, and, and so that is, and then what happens as it is subducted underneath North America, it, it kind of builds up, builds up, and then breaks every 500 years, creating over a 9.0 earthquake, okay? And that's called a subduction zone earthquake. Now, to the south of the Juan de Fuca plate is another plate called the Gorda plate. And there are a set of volcanoes off of the southern coast of Oregon and northern coast of California. Uh, and it's creating a plate that is moving towards North America uh, at a slower rate. Now, the, the one that is... The, well, the Fuca plate is two, about uh, two centimeters a year, about as fast as your uh, fingernail grows. The, the, the other one to the south is not uh, moving as fast. And so the Blanco fault zone is the, is the fracture in between these two plates, moving at two different rates. One is moving faster than the other one. Uh, and, and as a result, you build up pressure, build up pressure, break. Build up pressure, build up pressure, break. There's no subduction. The subduction is coming from either the Juan de Fuca plate or the uh, uh, um, the uh, Gorda plate being subducted underneath North America, and that's that's the one we're really concerned about. But like today, we had up to a 5.8 earthquake, which is gigantic. Uh, now, a lot of the ones that we normally have are threes and fours. They're in closer. Today, these were out very, very close to the volcanoes that were creating the, um, the, the, the two plates that you've got. Uh, and, and so that, uh, that's, you had a 5.8, a couple fours, I mean, uh, 10 earthquakes, uh, significant size in one day, that's quite a bit. But it's further, they're further out. So why, and they're all on the Blanco Fault Zone. And that's where two plates are moving by one another. Nothing's being subducted underneath uh, one another. Uh, they're off the coast. It's deep water. And um, so the amount of damage is going to be minimal. And then always, always when you hear earthquakes, the, the question comes up, is there going to be a tsunami? My rule of thumb is you got to have at least an 8.0 magnitude in order to have a tsunami. Uh, that is a very, very sizable one. Um, and, and, and so th these are much smaller earthquakes. And so no tsunamis from them. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the, the tsunami thing is that, um, also because these are kind of plates that are moving side by side versus subduction, is there a greater, um, probability for a tsunami from a subduction zone earthquake? Yes. Yes. Subduct so what happens with a subduction zone earthquake? The Juan de Fuca plate is being uh, is going down underneath North America, but it is it's not slipping by, and so it is bending, 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 and then when uh, it breaks, North America jumps towards Japan uh, like 30, 40 meters or something like that, a huge amount of distance, and is that displaces a whole bunch of water that comes back, and that's your tsunami. Uh, okay. and, and so, whereas this is just breaking, it's not, it is not uh, really uh, offsetting any of the water that you've got. 
Now, you mentioned that these uh, earthquakes that happen today happen further off, closer to the volcanoes that you say are basically fueling these plates. So is there, um, are these underwater volcanoes or are these volcanoes? Oh, yeah, it's all underwater volcanoes. Okay, and is there a, a way or a, um, an agency or something that, or a device that tracks activity down there? Like, if, are these volcanoes, you know, extra active right now? Is it, like, is it almost like a race or is it just, know. you know, it, it's luck of the draw and it just, wow, this cluster seems to be out of the ordinary because we haven't really had that in a while. Yes, and, and they're, you know, they are not going off every day. Uh, they are going off maybe for maybe a month of activity and then it will stop. And there are a whole bunch of them. And they're just basically vents along the bottom of the ocean. That uh, The magma comes out is, is primarily what we call mafic magma that forms with salt. And so they're not, it's not real steep. It's kind of low angle like this. Um, Oregon State University has, has got sensors out there on the bottom of, of the ocean. And so Oregon State, uh, uh, which is tied into the Pacific Northwest, seismic network that we have got and so yes they are uh, they periodically say oh there are a whole bunch of swarms that is a whole bunch of really tiny earthquakes occurring out there on axial volcano for instance which is one of the volcanoes on the ridge and they say oh it's erupting at that time and just magma is coming out and uh, so the, nobody has really picked up that there's more activity in the volcanoes or not out there. Uh, but just, I mean, with the two plates moving at different rates, you're building up the pressure, pressure building up and break. So that's what's happening. So essentially, it's it's just like a lot of pressure built, just right. kind of broke today. It just seems like it, uh, it right. today was the tipping point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because most of the time that it's breaking is in much, much closer to the shore. This was 200 to 250 miles off the coast of Newport. And uh, uh, normally it's a hundred, 150 kilometers or miles off the coast, much closer in. So they were all further out, all in the same area, which is kind of fun. I mean, okay. for me as a geologist. Oh, absolutely. Um, but not, again, not concerning by any reason, um, any stretch of the imagination that you can think of. No, no, no. And it's releasing pressure primarily on the Blanco fault zone. Uh, has, it really is not releasing any pressure on the Cascadia and, and the subduction zone at all. Uh, they're not related to one another. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, is there, that's all the questions I had for you, Great. but are there anything, any other things about this that maybe the everyday person should know or could be curious about that I didn't bring up? Well, I mean, it just reminds us that we live in earthquake country and, and, and so, I just, I use it whenever some things come up like this to say, make sure that you have your earthquake kit. It's not going to be the small earthquakes that we're going to be concerned about. It's going to be the big one. And when the big one occurs, it's going to be an earthquake. It's going to last three, four minutes. Uh, it's going to knock you to the ground. It's going to seem like it's never stopping. Uh, and it's going to cause a lot of destruction and a lot of problems. And so we need to be all prepared at home and in our work. And, and resilience plans for our work and our schools, what to do in cases like that. But at home, we need to be ready uh, to maybe go into a camping boat for two or three weeks. And uh, so your house, need, you need to be prepared at home. So I just use it as an excuse to uh, make sure that you are ready, that you have you changed the water in, in your supply uh, make sure that your food is good and you have enough food that you've got uh, pr pr probably a couple weeks because um, by that time the Red Cross will be coming in and, and helping everybody. But the first couple weeks is going to be pretty difficult. So I, I use it as that. Right. Uh, but we, we, we live in a geologically active area. We got mountains. Anytime you got mountains, you got earthquakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and we live in an absolutely beautiful part of the world, Pacific Northwest. And we are active geologically, whether they are earthquakes or floods or tsunamis or volcanoes. We've got it all here. You all right. could, we could live in Kansas, kind of boring geologically, not much happening out there. You get a few tornadoes now and then, a few floods, but that's about it. Whereas here, we got it all. And we love it. <laughs> yeah, we love it. All right, Scott, thank you so much for taking right, the time. Good I appreciate luck. it. Have a good night. Bye-bye.